Welcome to another exciting episode of the Click Nation's Comic Book Chronicles. Yeah! Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Good we are the Comic Book Chronicles, and I am your host, Tim Dill Double G. I gotta say, it's comforting to hear the applause. <laughs> <laughs> Always. And with us tonight is the man you just saw behind the sound effects at Agent underscore seventy on Twitter. What's up, everybody? <laughs> and we also have at Roddy Cat on Twitter. Up, everybody. nice so we're back on a friday night for one night only until we do it again for a very special reason because we spent last night all three in different states seeing black panther <laughs> as agent 70 starts jamming out over there Spotlight. see I, I cut it off just when i didn't want to because that's what was running through my mind as I was watching the movie, that run the jewels legend has it. That's right. I was gonna say with that I got a feeling there's probably gonna be another soundtrack that I was probably gonna be on because there was because the mo- the stuff running through the movie was you know, and that never played in the movie, right? No, no, no. This is just from the commercials. Most of the stuff in the movie was the the Kendrick stuff that uh, yeah, that's right. Came out on the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so K dot did um as 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 the kids refer to him, um. <laughs> you know he did the soundtrack so that was the majority of the music that you heard in the movie cool your black panther facts right here on the comic book chronicles there you go so it's safe to say we all enjoyed and loved the film yes so i guess we can go uh, just sort of around uh in the semi-circle uh this- sort of describing what each of our theaters and the experience were like uh for me i had a nice new black panther short sleeve hoodie t-shirt to wear that i posted an image of online this morning um my wife and i had went to five guys before the, the uh the showing just to get our dinner on and there was a couple there, both in Black Panther t-shirts. <laughs> Got to the theater. Um, we saw people dressed up in African wardrobe. That was nice to see. The theater it was not so. I saw it in a IMAX theater, so you know, kind of big, spacious, comfortable seating, reserved seating, so we didn't have to rush. Um, got there just in time, right before the preview started so had a nice handful of previews a lot of them that had been released online earlier in the week like the new rampage trailer uh solo a star wars story from super bowl ant-man and the wasp a host of others so that's at least how the the pre-game went on my side of things sure so just very quickly um I also saw it in an IMAX theater. I was just mentioning earlier that uh, we had intended to watch it in 3D in the IMAX theater, but um, my uh, my friend who bought the tickets informed me that she got an email um, that uh, the showing was going to be in 2D. Obviously, still in on you know in old school IMAX in like the one IMAX theater in Manhattan, but uh, you know the, uh, the 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 theater was uh, 
was pretty full. Um, again, like like Tim Dog said, uh, we had reserved seating as well. So even though we got there early, you know, just to because there's going to be a line at the you know popcorn and all that whatnot uh, stuff. So at the concessions, but um, you know, sitting down, uh, took a look around. There weren't as many people dressed in um, uh, uh, African garb as I thought there might be, but that was all made up for by my buddy Malcolm, who came. Who who did a couple things? One wore his Black Panther costume and mask to sleep, wore it to work, did a FaceTime Facebook Live video, um, uh, uh, displaying himself running around the office in his Black Panther costume, full Black Panther costume, wore it on the subway to the theater, which caused him to be you know run a, a couple minutes behind, and then watched it, watched the movie in full costume. Actually, I think he took the helmet off just so he wouldn't be, uh, you know, uh, restricted. But uh, you know, that made up for all of the, you know, all of the other people that didn't really get dressed up because it was like going to Comic Con with them. <laughs> Lots and, of fun. Yeah, that's pretty dope. And for me, uh, it's kind of like Tim, except for I know, like, unlike you guys, I went to a TV show on purpose because I don't really do um. 3D and the IMAX is like way across town. I'm not even sure if it's a real one, but there were more people like uh, you were kind of saying. Oh. There were more people with um, t-shirts. Like there wasn't anybody dressing up. There might have been somebody like in a later show. I don't know how to ask my cousin who was working that night. But um, uh, but yeah, in in my showing, which was a full, pretty pretty packed um pretty packed up house a bunch of people with t-shirts like i was telling tim before there was somebody that had the same t-shirt as i did and there was a a, you know and good smattering of some nice different t-shirts all going all around and um let's see and uh the trailers were kind of like what tim said also so we're gonna need to to go into that and um yeah it, it was it was awesome good deal um so as far as expectations going into the film, they were pretty high because everyone had sort of been hyping and waiting for this film for years and I guess decades even. Right. And the reviews, you know, obviously kind of set the bar very high. Yeah. yeah. You know, even the very non-spoiler reviews, you know, just the just the the warmth. You know, in some of the words were, you know, kind of, you know, kind of, kind of uh, set the set the stage for something uh, epic. Yeah, I stayed away from all of that, but even though being on Twitter, you kind of saw like at the very least the title, the the headlines of it, and that kind of stuff. So, right. and obviously, people, you know, people have been going to see it like since Tuesday or even before that and whatnot, and you kind of help with getting certain impressions here and there. But try to keep my expectations metered to for the for the most part because i as a pretty noted black panther fan and i was pretty hyped for it already you know i was just like okay i know i i didn't want to get too hyped up for it you know so. jumping ahead i i left the movie kind of trying to see where I, I wanted to place it as far as just like solo marvel movies go in terms of the rankings yeah ah Cause like the I'll, I'll always favor like the ensemble pieces like Civil War just because it's just so cool seeing everyone together mm. on one screen like that. Um, and then I, Winter Soldier I like, but again that's like that wasn't the first first solo film for Cat. Yeah. That was just if we're talking end. about like yeah, if we're talking about like the straight like kind of you know origin, like, origin, origin. Yeah. yeah. So probably definitely my favorite origin. Or first, yeah. Well, listen. The first Iron story. Man obviously, you know, set the bar pretty high, um, and they had a ch- Marvel Studios had a chance to refine that as they were going along. So I think, you know, my personal favorite. This is probably tied. Black Panther is probably tied with my personal favorite. It's not everyone's favorite uh, origin movie, which is Captain America: uh, The First Avenger. I happen to like that a little bit more than Iron Man. Mm. But hmm. right there with it, you know, Iron Man set the, you know, like there's so many things you can still quote from Iron Man. Like, you know, is it better to be feared or respected, you know? So, but, uh, you know, this is right, you know, this, they had so much time to kind of refine their, uh, their game and, you know, and Kugler definitely 
you know, put together an excellent story, like in terms of the pacing, in terms of, you know, how they set things uh, in motion during the movie. I'm curious to see how they, where they would go for a sequel. Yeah. Roddy, what do you think? What, what's your ranking? See, this is actually the first time I've thought about it uh, since now that you guys mentioned it. And um, I don't know. I might be up there with you because I did like Cap's origin story as probably the most um, out of the, the bank of the ones we've seen. Right. So I might be up there with you as far as this being tied with that. Because this was... While this was kind of an origin story, it kind of wasn't because he, he did show up. Well, I mean, it was an origin story because it kind of went through his background, but um, yeah, it was our first time being introduced to him. Right. right. He did establish the character pretty well in Civil War. Civil War, it kind of changes a little different for me, but um, but I think I just say, I just refer to for real quick, I just say I'm probably out there with you about it. Like these are two I, are kind of I, until I've figured, you know. And I'll give you some of my reasoning just very quickly. Um, Cap had a very tough problem to deal with in that you've got this kind of boy scout character that you have to sympathize with empathize with and end up rooting for and that's a big deal that they accomplished in that movie like you actually find yourself rooting for skinny steve before he becomes captain america and 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 here in this in this movie you have to kind of you know, uh, find a, a, a way to empathize with, I hate to say this, not a spoiled son of a king, but, you know, kind of like, you know, like where he's coming from, you're, you have to empathize with him. And you're also learning about this entire country that is foreign to everybody. Cause one, it doesn't exist. And two, you know, they're establishing, um, you know, it's, um, uh, it's, 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 it's political, uh, system right in front of us. You know, so these are really, you know, like big, uh, accomplishments that are, that, that, you know, that, that are uh, performed in these movies. So, you know, establishing that, you know, that's why I put them right on par with each other. It, it, such big, you know, weighty things to, uh, to, to get done in a movie. Yeah. The thing about this, and which I was actually thinking about earlier was there is, they, there was the potential of a Batman problem. Meaning, which, but it, it has never been that case. And obviously, there's many Batman movies, and as many times we've seen his origin, it's, it, it's totally not the same. Right. But, um, but you did, you did kind of go back, you see kind of his thoughts after, you know, after losing his dad, which it did, which did come up in, but they bring back up in the movie, you know, and him suddenly becoming king, you know, uh, due to that, you know, and obviously winning, you know, the, the challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but it, but it doesn't end up being a Batman thing because like one, you don't get, you don't hear it every other time and he kind of handled it in a different way. So I kind of hate uh, explaining it that way, but that's kind of what I'm sure there are some people who will think of it in a similar manner. Mm -hmm. He didn't really, you know, dwell upon it as much, or at least not noticeably as much as we have seen in the Batman movies. The Black Panther also gave us one of the more sympathetic villains, which has been a knock against Marvel for some time. Their sure. uh, level of villain, villainy. Right. And it, w w one, one funny aside from that, um, it happens very early in the movie. This, this particular character and actor appear on, 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 on the screen. And I'm like, Randall, you know, and those, this, this is us fans out there. Randall, how could you, <laughs> how could you? So, uh, that I'm not spoiling anything because, uh, you know, but that does play a part in, uh, Eric Killmonger's origin. So the great, uh, Sterling K Brown. Yes. Randall. It's like, what would Jack think of this anyway? But, <laughs> but um, but you know, as as Tim said, he uh, Michael B. Jordan's Eric Killmonger was was a pretty sympathetic figure throughout most of the uh, throughout most of the movie. <laughs> Sadly, I've never seen The Wire, but oh yeah, well I mean he 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 shows up real young in The Wire. Hmm. Have you seen um, uh, Get Out? No. Oh, I was about to say you're also not seeing Daniel Kaluuya. Kaluuya. Right. I knew he was from uh, there, but yeah, I've never seen right. him. But uh, in terms of uh, what you call in terms of getting, uh, you know, having another uh, uh, fine actor show up and be like, "Oh no, why are you in the?" Oh, I don't. I won't spoil the get out. Uh, uh, I won't spoil get out then. 
Right. Well, the, there's I, I kind of want to go into slightly spoilers here, but there's but I don't I'm not gonna do it. But you'll know what I'm talking about uh, when I when I talk about it. You see, a, a also another Odin noted actor who in a what year or two's time end up with this, in the same fate as he did in another movie that he was recently in, playing a kind of similar character and that of as far as we're oh, you mean I was gonna say you mean ghost dog? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, damn, not again. <laughs> That's kind of spoils it for some people, sorry, but yeah. But <laughs> but um but yeah so um yeah, that I, I I didn't think of that, but now that you mention it, that's mm-hmm. pretty uh, that's pretty uh, ironic. Mm-hmm. Um, goodness gracious! So right. I was gonna say, so I guess we could just get into the, into like just broad strokes in terms of like what we thought of the movie and any uh, any kind of like big things we wanted to mention. Uh, you can start off then. I was gonna say for my favorite character in the film, I have to go with. Uh, T'Challa's younger sister, Shuri. Mm. She, she's definitely among them, for sure. Yeah. The scene stealer, man. I need to see her in more uh, Marvel films going forward. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I don't know. So, so the, yeah, I was just asked that on Twitter. That it's like the same question, like, who's my favorite? And I'm like, Sure, definitely would be one of them, but definitely, but o- Okoye would. Yeah, be I gotta, I gotta, I gotta second that. I gotta second that. It was, it was awesome. I, I, I you know, words fail me. It was awesome to see Denai Guerrera in a non Michonne role that's still, you know, kind of in genre, mm-hmm. and just kicking butt and just being so forceful. It's so she was so awesome. Yeah, but there's also the the gorgeous Lupita Nyong'o as, as Nakia, who was also new. You know, oh, it was kind of funny that, that that don't freeze part. I was like, you know, I don't yeah. know too many people who probably wouldn't freeze <laughs> with seeing her. You know, but I thought, yeah, but then, but then that's that's also Guerrera's delivery with, mm-hmm. with that. You know, when she says it, she's affecting the the uh, the accent, and then when they get back, you know, like kind of mild spoilers, but when you know that particular mission is over side mission is over um she comes right back says well did he free <laughs> yeah that was that was pretty good so the sure he asked that right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 and also um a couple you know just a couple of uh, nice nice bits i was very glad that um most characters actually didn't get you know like the the short end of the stick a lot of characters had you know real moments um mm-hmm. In terms of uh, you know, in terms of the the supporting characters, I thought Mbaku, you know, Manape, without them ever having to say Manape, thank God. Um, yeah, that was intentional. Yeah. He had a you know that's yeah, but that you know that you know, knowing that I was just like thank God they 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 didn't put that in. But ultimately, um, he had some really good scenes. I'm like that's a you know that that that's a a great. Uh, uh, showing for a pretty, you know, I hate to call him like a D-list villain, but you know, that's sometimes how he's treated. True. True. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. That, that was a definitely good showings from him, and um, and you know, mostly everybody. Like, even I would almost even go so far as to say uh, Martin Freeman's character. I like. I don't. There was a couple of expectations. But comic wise, yeah, I, I play, yeah, he didn't play exactly the way the character in the comic did, right? But you saw that in Civil War, so it was like, okay, and you, you saw that. But I'm like, I kind of was kind of surprised what they did with him in this movie, you know, playing a somewhat, I guess you could say it's a kind of a significant role, you know, sure. Part. So, but um, that was it, was pr- pretty well done, playing a confident role, like after being played for jokes. Right. He ended up playing a competent role. Um, I would say that I think my biggest disappointment was, and I'm going to ring the spoiler bell because I'm going to, there's mild spoilers in what I'm going to say. But I thought I, I was disappointed that, you know, knowing that these are movies, I was disappointed to see what happened to Claw. But at the same time, at the same time, we know that Claw in the comics becomes 
not quite immortal, but definitely not flesh and blood. So right. there is a means to have Claw come back. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, even with what happened, I feel like that that could come back at some point. Right. Like that's not off, like completely off the table, especially in the MCU with things that are still on the table. Right. So. Uh, let's see. Any final thoughts? Personally, it was awesome. Go see it. I might go see it again. Took the, uh, took the wife. She enjoyed it uh, pretty much, and which is more than I expected. But <laughs> yeah, there's no might for me. I'm definitely going to see this again. Um, I may not trek all the way up to uh, the main IMAX theater, but I'm definitely going to see it again. I've already got open invitations from uh, friends. Uh, one at Matt Wang 97, who I know is watching and listening and, and, and tweeting along, I know wants to go see it again. So I might have to take him up on, uh, on an offer as well. Um, so, uh, with that said, you know, I, I was just you know, it was, it was exhilarating to watch it from beginning to end, watching the last end credit scene, knowing where this is all going, Mm -hmm. you know, was like the perfect capper. You know, I know that some, uh, critics were like, oh yeah, you know, this is just there to, you know, kind of keep the story moving along. But if you have been following along for 10 years, that was the perfect capper to a movie like this. Hmm. And I guess this should go without saying, but there are end credits, two of them, There's one two. into the next movie that is coming up, which actually I will say something about that one, it, which is um, that one didn't, the the one leading into the next movie didn't exactly play out like I thought it would have, this is surprisingly enough. Sure. Then, hmm? Yeah, kind of, sure. but it was like, it was like okay, that's, no, that's, well, they did it that way. All right, cool. So. It's probably just so that they can uh, squeeze in more characters <laughs> into Infinity War, <laughs> because I, if I'm if I'm reading along with what you're saying, or at least trying to read between the lines, that this this would have happened there. Hmm. Well, I think I'm just taking it as like, well, they just wanted to get this particular part out of the way as yeah. opposed to having that's, happen. You know, exactly. That's how I read it too. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I so, definitely yelled out. I was like, yes, or yeah, something like that. Like, it was definitely loud. Like, everyone was like, clapping, and the clapping was loud. I was like, yeah! Because mm-hmm. I was expecting I was expecting a little bit more of an interaction with a couple of more people, but th- that didn't happen. But the way that one went down was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and, and, and what's funny is that I, I guess I was having just a little bit of, you know, not I wasn't a hundred percent sure exactly when this movie falls in terms of the timeline, like it got post uh, Civil War. Yeah, I mean they kind of addressed it. Yeah, it begins a week after, at least when yeah. it gets to the current day. Exactly. That's what I was gonna say. It's it's almost right after. So that's how you have to understand it. I mean, there's only a few things that sort of happen in between the events that that uh, that end uh, in Civil War and the beginning of this movie. Right, and I was so glad that the 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 character we were talking about in the end credits wasn't a part of the main movie because I was so afraid that they were going to actually do something like that. I was afraid that uh, it would come up too, but mm. as a plot point. Well, yeah, because you can, yeah, especially what happens right, because of what happens in the movie, right? In terms of, um, well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it like this: in terms of um, shifting power in Wakanda. Right, it's like, mm-hmm. oh wait, these are the secret, you know, and 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 all the secrets being opened up. It's like, you know, like, can you imagine what would have happened? You right, know, had had, uh, had had the uh, had the usurper found out. That's you know, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that was a plot going to be a plot point too. Well, it, not only that, but if you remember the end credit of uh, Civil War, where you know where Cap was in Wakanda and and talking to T'Challa, to the T'Challa. And he was like, you know, they're going to come from if they know he was here, this person was here. And he was like, nothing comes. So I figured they were actually going to do something with that. Ah, uh, I see. A couple of characters also. So, but it didn't. So, but yeah, Ooh. don't worry. If, if you care to go see it, go see it. <laughs> go see it multiple times. There's, yes. there's plenty to digest. Indeed. 
You don't you happen to have the uh, ads up, do you? Sure. First ad of the night. This episode of the Click Nation's Combo Chronicles is sponsored by Busted Tees, your home for funny, awesome, cool t-shirts that are sure to get your friends' attention. Busted Tees puts many of their popular shirt designs on sale each week. Choose from several eye-catching t-shirts inspired by pop culture, cleverly themed TV t-shirts inspired by movies, video games, TV shows, comic books, and geek culture, and much more are all on sale. To help keep our podcast free, order from Busted Tees by going to cspn.us. That's cspn.us. Then click on the Keep Our Podcasts free link. Click on the Busted Tees banner and then shop for awesome t-shirts. Busted Tees through cspn.us. Do it today. All right, so the time to get to some comic reviews from the last two weeks because we were out last week. Um, I'll go ahead and kick us off. I'm actually just going to run down my three from last week. Get to mine. Yeah, so I'm going to start with Batman number 40, which I believe was the end of the so his sort of cross dimension adventure with super uh, not supergirl wonder woman where they took the place of i forget the guy's name but he's often this what is the it gentleman gentleman, yeah. gentleman yes off uh keeping our dimension safe by fighting an en- never ending swarm of alien demons yeah and he gets to spend some time to catch up with his woman while they take his place. And Catwoman's kind of babysitting him and also kind of like nudging him like, hey, you need to go on back home now so I can bring my fiance home. But and Batman stayed faithful because while they were there, time uh, passes by differently. So like minutes here are years there. Though so, uh, why they don't come back showing as if they're they've aged this never explained avengers 679 we get some nice uh, revelations regarding the grandmaster's opponent the challenger what his deal is <laughs> um there's another thing oh and who the challenger's mystery player is going to be right and yeah there's a couple of other things like uh, they kind of update us on jarvis a little a little bit and which the whole thing they come up with that seems kind of kind of silly but yeah that whole elder on elder beef was was the main crux of it yeah and um johnny storm isn't dead maybe yeah and it's been red number one uh brings back a i won't say long time marvel or it's been villain because they kind of were that just debuted Mm-hmm. over a decade ago or so which is old for a lot of people yes that is true um gene gray's got a mission statement that we don't quite know yet but she won't uh, i guess she kind of wants to make uh give mutants their own seat at the table at the united nations see how that goes so yeah my three from last week nice um, so you just, uh, mentioned two of the ones, three of the ones I was going to, uh, talk about. So I'll just add, um, daredevil number 598, uh, muse is back as of last issue and mayor Fisk isn't quite sure what to make of this. So this is, uh, um, the latest chapter in, uh, uh, Charles soul trying to, uh, you know, create this kind of funky new, um, uh, villain for daredevil to deal with. Um, Infinity Countdown number one. So this was an interesting setup. We do we find uh, Adam Warlock and Kang kind of doing some uh, uh, expl- you know explaining what's going on and finding out what uh, uh, the, the the possibilities for Infinity Countdown are going to be. And um, you know that that's pretty much it. You mentioned the other two that I had. Well, then real quick, yeah, you mentioned one that I have, so I don't want to do a couple. Uh, Rise of the Black Panther number two kind of feels like 
there were some parts, especially in the beginning of the issue, there are some parts of the movie that kind of uh, are seemingly redone in, in a way in, in, in this issue, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. But, uh, you know, we find young T'Challa coming into power. So this is like early, early, uh, early in the Black Panther's uh, reign slash career. Uh, but seemingly with some a change or two, because uh, like I said, this if you've seen the movie, then you know what I'm talking about with uh, with the beginning of the book. Kind of, uh, you start seeing some some uh, some of the same changes pop up then. But then he comes across Namor, which I don't know if he ever did actually in the past. Maybe he did because I don't. You know, it's been a while since I've read the old books. Um, so he he meets up with Ray, Namor. They have a fight, and uh, but they end up teaming up because they have a a slightly common goal. And uh, what ends up coming up in a book that we talked about what probably a year or two ago, some you know the, the T'Challa that we end up knowing ab about, you know, learning about his enemies and or his quote unquote enemies and the people in in the world kind of come back up, and it's because he find himself taking notes on Namor and uh, st starts to study him a, a bit, which if you think about it, you know, in the, a, uh, a, a book that, that, in the book that I'm references comes to play like way later on years later. So I thought that was kind of an interesting treat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Black Lightning, Cold Dead Hands, number four. Like this was a better issue than, than issue three was. It was basically in, in all out action issue. It was uh, it's Jefferson and the cops against this uh, group of group of uh, power suited flying folks that unknowingly to uh, Black Lightning is working for Tobias Whale because he's trying to get guns on the streets uh, and he's yeah he's basically doing what what um, some would think some real life people are doing with some of the gun violence uh, going on, but. That's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, it was a good issue because of all the action and whatnot. And there is that. Uh, also, uh, oh, Star Wars number forty-three. So it is. So the the plot that's trying to the um, the our ragtag crew is trying to take down this this new mining thing that the the, the empires got from this queen who apparently is helping them from the inside, but for her own selfish needs that was almost a fight between lay and the queen but not really because this is where it comes out that she's actually like yeah she's working with the empire but she's also trying to sabotage him at the same time because she, she wants her planet who was taken over by the empire to um somehow regain their independence again and she figured like the only way to do it is from the inside since she had no choice you know in becoming uh a partner to the empire, but that whole thing gets situation uh, sitting that situation, and apparently the the rebels find themselves a seemingly new ally. Uh, Batman White Knight number five. Uh, Jack Napier is training for a fight with the Batman, who is pretty much slipping even further into, you know, being a menace to Gotham, um, and also you know fracturing with the the fracturing of his own. You know, Bat family, i.e., Bat Batgirl and Nightwing, is getting uh, getting more and more heated, and uh, that, uh, that that book's been pretty good so far. So you should check that out if you are interested in a different take on the Batman Joker scenario. And I'll leave it at that. Cool. So. PCN underscore Dirt, who's not with us this week because he's on vacation. He had some books from last week. Versus number one from Image Comics. He says, Video game deathmatch meets reality TV in the whacked out future. Fun, fun, fun. I can only imagine the terror the letterer went through putting this together. Art is great because I believe it's Isad Ribic. Yeah, it is Ribic. This is um, creator owned. Story is solid, a little confusing at first, but made sense by the end. Loved it. His click of the week for the week of uh, February 7th. Nice. I'd go back and read that. 
Yeah, me too. And then the Chronicles of Corm Volume One, The Knight of the Swords. I think this is supposed to come out on the 22nd, but I got mine early. So I'm counting it. This early Magnola series is one of the stories that has started my Magnola addiction. I mean, sure, the story is timeless and has won numerous awards, but look at that art. And he also had Batman number 40. Something about this whole setup doesn't feel right to me. Catwoman waiting around while this dude chats with her girlfriend, with his girlfriend while knowing decades are flying by in a pocket dimension doesn't ring true. Plus, how is Bruce not forever scarred by this? Eh. Hmm. So that's our books for the week of February 7th. And now on to this week's books. I will do PC and Dirts again. Sure. Metal the Wild Hunt. Um, I think it's yeah, Dark Knights, the Wild Hunt, Metal Tie-in, I think is technically what it's called. A fun but somewhat throwaway issue. Do you need to read it? No, but do you kind of love characters like Detective Chimp and feel obligated to see what the fuck this is? I do. And did and enjoyed it. I tried reading this. It was tough. Granted, I was on the subway, but uh, <laughs> I read it. I mean, I didn't understand a lot what was going on, but right, it had good art. Uh, Mr. Miracle number one director's cut. Like I wasn't going to buy this. <laughs> It'd be my click, but since it's a re-release, that feels like too much of a cheat. And Solar Flare season two number four. This is a great post-apocalyptic post-apoc that no one is buying. You should. It feels really it feels real scary and awesome. Scout Comics should shop this for a TV or movie deal, and I wouldn't be surprised if they got it. Nice. So on to one of you gentlemen. Um all right, let me go real quick. Captain America 698. Uh we finally find out when uh well in the last issue cap was uh frozen and we find out what happens um to him uh once he's thawed and it's a pretty interesting premise he is uh thawed out in the very near future it's very surprising and if you read this you'd be very shocked to, to see what happens it's definitely wade's commentary on the current state of affairs of the united states of america in terms of the, uh, the political and social uh climate and uh it's a it's a pretty effective commentary on it i like it it's definitely a potential click of the week um uh for me uh dr strange number 385 i don't know if anyone else read it we both did so i like this issue a lot there's a lot of uh things that kind of there, there are a couple of swerves in here that i was i wasn't expecting uh to kind of reset uh the the narrative in the dr strange book going forward you know, there's a couple of things, you know, like I said, the couple of swerves in, in, in the story. Well, that... I like to think of it as that they, they're basically putting the blocks back into place because of, because given the events that are coming up and they, and they kind of allude to, they actually allude to all of them. Right. But there was one in particular that I was thinking of that they kind of had to get to a certain place with, and this is kind of putting it, putting it kind of back to where that is. Or at least putting or... strange, right, back into um, a position. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, it was like, yeah, it was kind of interesting. I like uh, how uh, Loki kind of channeled Scourge for a minute. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, um, they did the, the stuff they did with uh, Sentry. They've been doing for the last couple of issues. Kind of, kind of ends up here, right? And the aftermath of it too. You know, like it absolutely made sense. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there was a kind of swerve. I, I don't know if you think about this one with particularly this century because there was there was something mentioned about his status before now that right. was in here yeah that's definitely one of them there's yeah. multiple curves in terms of like what you don't expect to see happen um right. as a result of uh you know the last few issues in the story arc so mm. uh marvel two and one number three anyone else read this not yet so there's a couple of swerves in here in terms of what we're expecting uh, to happen in the near future, I think a lot of people are expecting the reunification or at least something very close to the reunification of the Fantastic Four occurring as a, as a result of the story. And that's probably going to happen, but we're definitely going on a couple of uh, 
sidetracks and, and detours on the way. Um, this particular issue deals with uh, the Human Torch's uh, flame kind of uh, dying out and uh, Ben and Johnny go to see none, none other than the Prince of Power, Hercules, Hercules, for help. And of course, that's never going to end well. So it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty amusing story. Uh, like I said, this is one of probably many detours on the way to reunifying the Fantastic Four. And uh, last for this week is Miss Marvel number 27. Um, this was a nice wrap to uh, this particular uh, 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 story arc with uh, Miss Marvel's friends. And I'm hoping to find out where Kamala has been uh, very soon. I hope that's in the... The, the the next issue it's actually not the rap because it's the rap on this particular gang's um uh super heroics because they call in the cavalry so that's you know that's where this uh this uh particular issue ends so i think there's one more issue in this particular arc that involves everyone except for kamala Okay, well, then you've already taken care of uh, one for me, so I only got a couple. Um, set us Teen Titans number 20. So the gang is kind of pretty much broken up after the events of the last couple of issues. Roy, uh, Harper, aka Arsenal, Speedy, whichever one you feel like you want to call them, is, t is taking on Inter Gang by himself because there's some drug things going on. Uh, he kind of gets in a little over his head, but gets saved by, spoiler alert, Cheshire. Um, who is there for her own reasons and not necessarily because she's a, a, a good person because the thing that they're going after she's, she's needing for the people she's working for and that's pretty much that and also leaves Roy in a particular state of um, uh, a particular state that he is thinking he has been in before, but we don't know. Well, at least oh, he doesn't know, but I think the audience has a pretty good idea of what, what happened to him. Uh, so there is that. And then there is Star Wars Thrawn number one, which I didn't necessarily get to read all the way through, but from looking at it, and I haven't read the, the, the novel itself, and it also, but it also says so in the... Um, the the solicitor around it is that this is an adaptation of Timothy um, Timothy Zahn's book, uh, and this is which goes through kind of like uh, the early days of Thrawn and him his uh, coming up through the ranks of the Empire to being the badass villain that he is to a lot of people in the Star Wars universe. And this is the first issue of that. Uh, so if you are so inclined, you should check that out. And that's it for me. All right, let me get mine going here. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 42 uh, kind of pits up after events from the clone conspiracy with uh, clones, some majority of them dying or evaporating, disintegrating, and some still living, and Spider-Man and Betty Brant investigating a uh, clue left behind by the Ned Leeds clone that looks like it may be bringing him back into the Marvel Universe by its conclusion. Uh, I also read Doctor Strange 385, which was pretty good. And Kick-Ass number one, which I got early through uh, Mark Millar's uh, editor on the book sent to me Sunday. So I got to put a nice review up on the website. For that, hopefully there's something nice in there that they pull for a pull quote, perhaps. I forgot to do a give it a star review rating. Uh, so I went back and added that after the fact. So hopefully they see it and like plastered it on the back of the book when it comes out. Um, so instead of the regular Dave kick ass as the star, we get Patience Lee, a black woman army veteran uh, mother of like three who sh she comes back home from the war but she finds out her husband's left her for another woman because he she supports his music career or her his pursuing a music career 
Um, she's trying to make ends meet and decides to start robbing or stealing money from these local people who are doing like dirty crimes around the neighborhood. So she's going to steal money from them and keep some of it, but also give it back to people who need it. Uh, so we see how that adventure starts for her right now. And I think Hit Girl, the new Hit Girl relaunch comes out next week. So that would be interesting to watch as well. And that is it. All right. Uh, so I guess uh, we're going to go into clicks of the week for two weeks. Uh, let's see. I see everyone, almost everyone put their in, in already. Right. Well, I was about to say, yeah, let me. Fine. I was to say, let me lead off because the book I picked for a click of the week I didn't talk about. Okay, go for it. Black Bolt number ten is my click of the week from last week. As everyone, what's that? I was wondering why you didn't talk about it. As everyone knows, I'm a huge fan of this book. This book needs more readers, more supporters. Um, uh, this is the uh, the aftermath. You know, we're, we're we're going right into the aftermath of the last issue where Lash. The uh, the inhuman from Orolan uh, uh, appears and uh, you know sticks his nose into uh, the, uh, the 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 funeral and the wake for uh, uh, Carl Crusher Creel and now Titania and Blinky and Black Bolt are uh, are are are, are uh, having it out with um, with Lash but something and uh, and and there's a twist in this issue where Blinky is not exactly what. Uh, she seems and we find out at the end of the issue that uh we may be uh seeing the uh, reappearance of a char of the character that was behind the uh the imprisonment of um black bolt and and uh the absorbing man and the other characters that we ran into so it's an interesting um twist uh lots of great uh reading in this and uh, just as a quick aside my uh, uh I, I i bought the uh the, the build a figure parts for the Absor absorbing man without having to buy all the stupid um superior foes of spider-man so uh be on the lookout on instagram for uh black bolt and, and the absorbing man uh marvel legend style all righty well in that case um i will do mine uh black panther uh, little black, little, little, sorry black lightning Cold Dead Hands number four. Like I said, it was a, it was a pretty action packed um, issue. There was that wasn't terribly as heavy handed as the last issue, but um, it was some good stuff. Cool. Mine for last week is Batman number forty. It's between that and Avengers six seventy nine, just because of how the sort of reveals and things we learned from that issue. But as far as art and story goes, uh, it's going to be Batman forty. Cool. And PC in underscore dirt uh, click of the week last week was v versus number one. Right. So this week's. This week, uh, I chose Captain America number 698. I definitely like your choice and Tim's choice, but I'm going to go with Captain America 698. <laughs> and which that choice would be Doctor Strange number 385 because it was a pretty awesome issue. With what with what went down in it, and uh, PC and, and my, or, so what? Mine, yeah, mine was Doctor Strange three eighty five as well. Yeah. Oh, and I was gonna say Dirts, which was uh, Soul of Valor season two number four. So there you go. All righty. All righty. So skip the ad read and jump right into the news. You can do that. <laughs> something up here okay uh so quickly through the headlines here aquaman james wan teases black man as iconic helmet joaquin 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 phoenix and talks for joker origin movie or is it joaquin phoenix Ugh. i think it's joaquin i don't know it doesn't matter but yeah so this is something they've been trying to talk about and Obviously, Jared Leto is not of all of us because I think this is supposedly something kind of different. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I was about to say, God forbid they have a consistent character, huh? Yeah, really. Uh, 
Michael Bay circling Warner Brothers Lobo movie. Don't do it. I hate to say this, but I think that's pretty fitting. I mean, yeah, still. <laughs> it is pretty fitting. Yeah. One and time Smallville, oh, Kryptonian God. joint Arrow and Athena. Yeah. Nightwing director asks fans for help picking a perfect actor. They're having that kind of trouble casting Richard Grayson. Wow. Arrows, Colton Hayes might be teasing DC EU Nightwing role. Avengers, Sebastian Stan is down to play DC's Riddler. No, stay away. <laughs> no. I don't see what kind of chops the dude has. Gal Gadot to voice herself in upcoming episode of The Simpsons. Well, they got to maintain the accent. DC fans helping Bronx school children see Marvel's Black Panther. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, there's a Avengers Infinity War teaser that happened through it through a sports ball game that happened a couple of weeks ago. I oh, think right. I just watched this the other day. I didn't see it too. Uh, Black Panthers and Baku talks Avengers Infinity War role. So yeah, he's gonna be in it. A fan found an undiscovered Doctor Strange Easter egg at the perfect time. So apparently there was a Groundhog Day reference because uh, the day that Doctor Strange takes place, or at least the latter half, definitely, um, is February 2nd, a.k.a. Groundhog's Day. And given the, what happened at the end of the movie, that also plays into that. FX's Legion Season 2 premiere date was set? Uh, April 3rd. There's a new Jessica Jones trailer. And there was a promo, Super Bowl promo spot for the Solo, a Star Wars story. Which we kind of saw. If you saw, well, we saw who went to Black Panther, kind of saw the same, some of the same stuff. So, uh, Rose Gallery, a lineup of three outlaws from Solo, a Star Wars story. Uh, Pablo Hidalgo teases films place in the timeline. Which kind of rubbing some people the wrong way because of yeah, where it's placed. Multiple Star Wars TV shows head to Disney streaming service. Makes sense. Disney streaming service launch to include Marvel and Star Wars shows. Hmm. Same thing. Friend of Hunch, but that, yeah, that, yeah, there was some different stuff in each one, so. Uh, we saw a first look at the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon with the African American Iqbal Neal. Actor Reg E. Kat Kathy Kathy died at fifty nine. I think it's Kathy. Uh, Marvel folks would know him as uh, the the father of the storms in the last father uh, in the uh, the these Doctor Storm from the last uh, Fantastic Four movie. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be Luke Cage's father in season two of Luke Cage. Mm -hmm. Netflix's Chillin' Adventures of Sabrina cast Sabrina's pet best friend. <laughs> I don't think they need to cast the pet, but yes. Mm. Tessa Thompson on Mark Millar's kick-ass casting comment. I'm highly interested. Yeah, which sounds like it has to do with that new kick-ass that you talked about earlier. And Conan the Barbarian TV series in development at Amazon. What is best in life? And let's see, come back on the second. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, there's spillover. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. Which and it's not that much, but yeah. So I'll go get this out of the way. Uh, Annihilation Ex Machina director wants to helm a. Swamp Thing movie. Uh, let's see. Melissa McCarthy to start with uh, Tiffany Haddish in A New Lion's The Kitchen, which is apparently is a graphic novel or something from DC's Vertical from, uh, or a comic book from a few years ago, a couple of years ago. Um, here's your first look at the English dub of the incredible looking Batman Ninja. We've kind of pretty much seen the movie, but this is with the English doubling attached, as the thing says. It still looks great. Can't wait for to see this. Um, Arrowverse star wanted the Legion of Doom sitcom, which could have been amazing. I think it was the guy that played um, 
the reverse flash and they were talking about how how good it was on set and working with the other guys and they pitched it to to um they pitched it to cw but it didn't work out obviously um or hasn't concept art from george miller's justice league reveals the, the flash black suit and black suit uh superman which so apparently george miller aka of mad max fame um might have done or was going to do a justice league movie 10 about 10 years ago when it got brought up and this is some concept art from that had it gone off uh black panther which is this is the last bit of um the the news from that i mean from the cinematic news black panther sprinting towards historic 200 million plus four day on four day weekend this was from earlier today so yeah make that money well, yeah, what's what's cool about this is that it's that four day weekend where in a lot of places, especially here in New York, uh, next week, the kids have off school. The public schools are closed next week for like midwinter recess or something. Again, of like President's Day or something. It or is, is President's Day, but because uh, kids don't have to worry about going to school on Tuesday. Mm. They can, you know, sit in the movie theaters, you know, on Monday, even Sunday night and not have to worry about anything. Right. So that is the cinematic stuff. Cool. Comic book news. Marvel is making The Last Jedi in comic book form. Surprise, surprise. Square Enix's Avengers game will have a new and original storyline. Which they've been saying already, so. Stan Lee released from hospital. Good for you, Stan. And he had an awesome cameo in Black Panther. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that was hysterically funny. It was fun. Mm -hmm. First or full first issue of Sword Quest Real World. I think that's the trade paperback from the first five you know, for the uh, for Sword Quest, which has been out since like five, the first six issues rather of that. So. What are they living in an apartment with cameras on them? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm so glad you got that. <laughs> Not that kind of, I'm sure that comic would would be coming next. <laughs> but the, there's an interesting story behind that Soul Quest book, actually, um, for a old old game that you wouldn't think would work in a uh, the, the way they played it off, or the way they planned it off. But it's pretty good, All right? Chief Franklin and Nick. Patara to announce new projects at Image Expo, along with a whole bunch of other people. Which should be on the 21st or, yeah, yeah, in a few days. So we will probably get some news from that next week. DC launches new young reader and middle grade imprints. Uh, DC Inc. and DC Zoom. Uh, the teacher becomes the student in Giles number one. So that's a preview of the Buffy Vampire Slayer spinoff series. Yeah, done by Eric Alexander and Josh Whedon. American history gets in your face with action presidents. I I picked these up. They look awesome. I have uh, the Lincoln and the Washington. I've got the Lincoln in my hands right now. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they're pretty. They look pretty cool. I have not had a chance to read them yet, but they look pretty cool. And yeah. unleash your inner Wakandan warrior with Black Panther collection from Rock Jewel, Rock Love Jewelry. So this is a different collection than the other one that we talked about probably a, a few weeks back, and this actually has a slightly cheaper price than some of the stuff that we saw in that last <laughs> last stuff. So I actually might want to get these Kamo Kamo the Kamoya bracelets. Oh, they are licensed. Mm hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, this this uh, company has a lot of licensed stuff for for other brands also, including like Star Trek and Guardians and Firefly and other et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and they have two levels of the Kamoyo uh, mm -hmm. uh, bracelets. That's awesome. Uh, That's watch, awesome. There's some gift. I was about to say there's some gifting ideas in here for my buddy who uh, who freaking went to the who, who freaking went to the movie in full costume, went to work in full costume. <laughs> So yeah. All righty. Cool. All right. So uh, we up for the uh, last ad read for the night? Yep. All righty. So um, our last ad read for the night is 
for Blue Apron's meal delivery service. Blue Apron, fresh ingredients and incredible recipes delivered weekly to your door. Skip the grocery store and make incredible meals at home with Blue Apron, always shipped free right to your home. And now, for the listeners of the Click Nation's Comic Book Chronicles, you can get $30 off your first Blue Apron order. To place your first order with $30 off, and to help keep our show free for you, go to our network website at cspn.us. That's cspn.us. Then click on the Keep Our Podcasts Free link at the top of the page. From there, scroll down to the Blue Apron link and sign up for your first order. Blue Apron through cspn.us. Do it today. Follow us on our individual Twitter accounts. I'm at Tim D O G G nine eight and at CB Cron. Roddy Cat is at Roddy Cat and at News Nerds Need. What's he back out there? <laughs> and follow my Instagram CB Caps. Agent seventy is at Agent underscore seventy on Twitter and Instagram. And follow PCN Dirt on Twitter at PCN underscore Dirt and go to his website, popculturenetwork.com. And we'll be back next week, Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to theclipnation.com forward slash live to always watch each and every week. We are the Comic Book Chronicles and we are signing off. Peace! to the spotlight. Copying of bubbles and I'm in the- It's Dr. Doom. What's on your evil mind? Oh, you